Hi, I love your guys' channel. That's lovely. I'm going to try to hyper simplify my question for the sake of not sending you guys an essay. I'm a cis hat woman, I guess, in a long term relationship with a cis hat guy. As the years have gone by, it's become more apparent that we differ in terms of our needs for an expression of affection and intimacy. Emotionally, for me, I really need and un- un- I really need and love to give and receive uh, affection and intimacy. But he has far less of a need for that. We're still very much in love, and he's happy to accept the affection I give uh, that I give, um, but makes way more way less of an effort to do so himself. He's a very dedicated, serious, intellectual type who is always worried he's wasting time if he's not reading eight pla- eight plus hours a day. I'm not laughing. You're working laughing. Working on a project which I love and admire about him, but often makes him very emotionally unavailable. For example, I'll compliment uh, how he looks all the time. He tells me I'm pretty, etc. Like maybe three times a year. We have sex like once a month at most. Good foreplay has become rare. And he hardly says or does sweet things for me or pumps me up anymore, etc., etc. It just makes me feel sad and a bit taken for granted as a romantic partner. I've spoken to him about it several times, but he always seems to slip back into this. Have you guys dealt with similar situations? Yeah. I th- th- I worry that this is becoming a lefties for lefties sort of this show, which is kind of a bit annoying. So we're sorry for that. But sorry like, for our all right viewers. <laughs> we'll have more content for you soon. We are actually doing an incel special soon. Yeah, so we are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned. Yeah, incel. Yeah. We're, when we say incel, incel special, it comes with lots of empathy. Empathy. And all that stuff. Yes. Yeah. So I heart incels. I honestly like I started making this making notes on this and I was like I can't do this I have so many feelings about this and I don't know if I will be necessarily be able to even express those because mm. um, it's complicated there's mm. a few different parts I want to unpack so like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so many things to unpack. <laughs> love it Oof. Uh, and everyone Please. so I have so I have completely can see how I could have fallen into this sort of like a pattern with some people that have like thank fuck rejected me oh wait you think you're the you're the dude in this situation no oh i'm the lady i'm the lady i went for guys like this that i thought will save them and if they only realize that i am the love of their lives and i'm sexy enough and i'm cool enough that they will just like settle down with me and like realize that the happiness in life is not just that that's actually also me and they'll be crazy about me and um Perhaps they have done that for a couple of years with this person, maybe, and it seems like they fall into this trap. Wait, that's yet a long again. time. We don't know how long time. That's a problem. Like my only and very very serious point of empathy with the dude, I will say, is just like again, I don't know the class of these people, but I also something I also think something to be said about um, people, not necessarily men in this case at all, actually, uh, that have ambition to be better, become better, have. A, a more sustainable income and perhaps they have they have this insecurity that they are constantly should be that they constantly should be learning and are becoming better and if they're not doing that that they're wasting their time and basically it's this like financial anxiety most of the time or like not even financial but like um, ambition anxiety that they haven't got to where they need to be yet so they're abandoning that relationship. Yet, I will say that there is a difference between financial anxiety and ambition anxiety because I can totally see like a Boris Johnson character sort of like ignoring his relationships just because he wants to become a prime minister. See, my my take is that like, I can see that anxiety manifesting in the man, but what that anxiety essentially boils down to is that you think your political work is more important than your relationship work. This and is why it's such a mirror. And therefore, your political work is inherently not feminist. Because if you are saying that like, for the revolution, I need to be reading these 10 texts a day and writing these like billion page articles that are gonna go up on fucking Taylor and Francis and be 40 quid a read, that's your like prerogative. But like, if you're not there emotionally for your partner, you're not a good feminist and therefore your revolution is bullshit and I don't give a fuck. So I think there is a separation between Uh. (laughs) academia Yes, but I also think there is a separation between like direct action people and academia people. But it's an academia hard, people question, right? But that's a, those two hardly intertwine. As in, um, I 
I don't think I basically I will shit on this person even more as in like I don't think their inherent thoughts is like how do I bring up a revolution? How do I reproduce myself in this particular world where I can I can be seen again as someone who has better ideas? Not to no, say that they certainly. ever get actually be born into direct action. No, they they possibly have no plans to ever engage in direct action, but they'll write the paper on it with citations to the Lord. Like exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, as in, it's even more politically de- desperate. My actually. worry is that like the I think woman, I don't know the partner, know, yeah, the, yeah, the person, it is it way. a woman? It like, seemed, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It says, yeah it was writing, yes, yeah, yeah. The the woman in this situation is feeling like essentially like like in the previous question her partner is engaging in an activity that has nothing to do with her that takes the majority of the time and means he can't be there for her i don't give a fuck if that yeah activity is saving orphans essentially she what she's saying is my partner is not here for me and he is meeting justifications based on politics like no i'm sorry no i've read this and i straight away was like drop the waste man honestly like absolutely way more than yeah. any other question that we've ever read like, but maybe i'm also projecting no but i'm also projecting but like like yeah because this is the circles we're in unfortunately yeah. oh unfortunately i mean you know we love like academic my content. god the idea that i would partner a dude like i'm sorry i would i would um i would uh give compliments to a dude and would only receive this fuck up maybe i have hugely like high standards but a fucking no, i do like think that, like it is an okay you know. request if you're with a partner for a long time to be like hey like it makes me feel really good if you compliment my outfit or it makes me feel really good if you notice that I've changed my hair and to communicate that to them because they might not realise because they're so like, you know, Marxist and like, who cares about aesthetics? That you don't need that. And like, you know, that's wank. But Gramsci, but, we care about aesthetics. But yeah, exactly. Like, you know, Monsieur Gramsci would tell me my hair is fly, would tell me I look great in that dress and would get laid because of it. I mean, he was, like, yeah. we don't exist in a vacuum of fucking Marxism. Like, I can be a good political activist and I can write all the good texts and I can also want my fucking boyfriend to tell me I look hot in this new dress. And that is not a hypocrisy. That is important. No, I think you answered your own question. And also because at the end of I the... I have a question. I said anger. No, but at the end of the question, they were like, look, I have had these conversations. Like, basically, you, it's not even as being like, hey, have a conversation with your partner. Perhaps, like, that's like a thing. You have had those. They always slip into that same Is it? They actually had pattern. the conversation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, so what I would try and reduce that into like what's going on is like whether it is a professional ambition or whether it's a financial ambition. Because like I think to me those are very, very two different things. Financial ambition I can totally relate to as in like you feel so insecure in your own class as such that you are gonna and you almost like being like babe just do your own thing for now but i'm gonna get us that house i'm gonna get us that second house whatever that though that's bullshit i'm gonna get us that and then we'll relax and then we'll be there for each other wait 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 and then no no so sorry <laughs> i never used, usually do this but to, to come up yeah, come yeah, back yeah, to me, the ambition one. i'm gonna make faces <laughs> <laughs> but and then there's this not say that that's still good behavior because obviously working class people can also be absolutely fucking shit out relationships but hey um say that myself but um but there is something to be said that i think the the sort of the the the, the ambition question in terms of not to say that ambition financially is not the same thing but like in terms of status status like if you already feel quite secure materially and actually there's not that much that can be brought status wise if they are going to continue in that endeavor like you're already comfortable as is then really it's just about their ego it's not about pleasing you and your material needs it is about them boosting their own ego but it's not entirely to say about the that, ego there's not nothing about financial security in there like not, well, you're I giving mean, them the big benefit of the doubt no here. one no one talks about their class like that a lot of the time well, they should Anyways. and you can with us yes by the way yeah because we'll definitely talk about yeah we love to work class also not to say that like those are not intertwined like i mean uh definitely a person that is um you know gonna also save the lady from her perhaps financial but security i don't give a fuck if you're gonna win a fucking nobel prize if you're shit to your partner you're shit to your partner i like city boys <laughs> yeah <laughs> But like, nah, I just feel like this is excuse making. Like, if you're saying that I can't be here for you and I can't compliment you in the way that you feel like you need and that's a valid fucking bit. need it's because I'm working on my papers. Like, no, how, how many seconds of a day did it take to say, hey, you look really good, babe? 1.5. But it comes from a point of insecurity because they feel like they're not giving enough, perhaps. You were giving to them too much partner. credit, I think. I d- 
but this is fascinating. Yeah. This is a good conversation to have. But this is why we never prepare answers in, in, in advance, because I guess we do have these perspectives as such. Like I can see, I guess maybe I'm again I'm projecting. I can see how myself, if I was in like a, in a relationship where I really felt like, especially if the other partner is like a bit more middle class than I am, that I would just try to grind through this particular fear that I'm in to be like okay now i am secure and now can give you what you deserve and now i'm like established enough but i have to do this grind and like you kind of like and out of complete insecurity but because even you feel if, already insecure that like you're no good enough for that person but even if they had actually like during the process communicated to you like hey mariam i just feel like it'd be cool if you like said i look pretty a few times a day well yeah like of course. you know what i mean like it doesn't I, mean, I don't sound think like i would fall into the space but where it I doesn't sound like she's asking for much this is the point like she's asking for quite a small amount of gratitude and like like yeah she would just, all she wants is like a small amount of affection i don't know like it, it's not like can you hang out with me every tuesday it's just like can you notice that I'm attractive and like I don't know yeah I know to be fair and then we if we go boil down to like the sixth question like I could not live I could not hang out in a relationship where like sex is only very very like mechanical once a month and then we're off to each other as well so I have been in those relationships and they reach the crisis point and they either get resolved to the point where we like we imagine and we find ourselves and we're like banging again and it's great or we break up like it's just it's a thing like it's just so i think that does reach to like a boiling point in a way and i hate to be reducing it to that but like i think the intimacy question and like the the, yeah. the, the sort of the the i think the more intimacy you have with the with the other person the more actually you then get on like. that's the thing like i just feel quite hard line against the dude in this situation because i'm just like yeah if you don't have time to have an intimate relationship with your partner you probably shouldn't be in a relationship like your partner is not just a thing that you can fall back on and pick up whenever you, you feel it's convenient. Emotional like, labor, they're doing yeah. a lot of emotional labor. Of and course, it's like, this yeah. is such a metal show. Like, a girlfriend is not a convenient thing that you can just like, like if you want that, get a fucking booty call. Like, But it comes from insecurity probably that they feel like not good enough for their partner as well. Like I've also fallen into relationships. But you're projecting this, this is not in the question. Again, no, like, I, I'm, me projecting is in the question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, absolutely projecting here. But like I've also fallen into the spot sometimes like where um i am cold sometimes maybe to my partner because i feel insecure as to what i am or who i am so like i want to become that better person so that they will see me in like a whole new light and then we begin a new chapter sort of thing which is wrong but no, no, i think wrong. that's fine but it seems like he is just prioritizing his political work not his political work to better like it doesn't come through that he's doing his political work to better them it comes through that he's doing his political work to better the future of politics. And she is a second in that dynamic. Like first comes a revolution, seconds comes my girlfriend. And that's the thing I have issue with. But also like they said they're reading academic texts, not necessarily are they like political. That's academic. true. They, they might just be, be like, like fucking biology. Boring you know? shit. Yeah. Or like quantum physics. In which you case, I mean? fuck you. <laughs> fuck no. physics. So this is my own role and disagree, but like, that's <laughs> fine. Cause I think happens sometimes. if anything political acad academia is actually way, le like way more boring than like, mate, if someone could be like quantum physics, babe, or like I know a lot about it. Yeah, really I guess boring. I was assuming it was political work, but you're totally right. It could have just been literally like, I love like looking at amoebas and I want to look at amoebas yeah. 10 hours a day. So fuck you. That's got a heart. <laughs> <laughs> Can your amoeba spend some time with me? I, I think we should end with this question. Yeah, no, no, for sure, for yeah. sure, for sure. Um, so yeah, we definitely like even protected here with the whole like yeah, political thing. Yeah, I completely assume well, like, political academia, but you're Does totally right. To be? Yeah. Um, I just feel like there's so many dude bros that get away with being dude bros because they're like, I'm sorry, babe, I'm like writing for the revolution right now. I agree, and yet, and as I say, I think sometimes it does come from a place of insecurity. Border like borderline though is them not making you feel like exactly. you are the sexiest woman alive because you fucking should feel that way in whichever relationship you are. Yes, absolutely. If your partner is not making you feel attractive and wanted and loved, then you need to either bring that up with your partner, which it sounds like you've done, yeah. or dump that amoeba filled But it's not easy for us to say that, but like, man, like that's not to say that we don't acknowledge what a fucking difficult it is 
think it is yes. because also like okay they do eight hours plus a day of reading and then perhaps you have like a time at the end of the day where you guys are drinking wine and they're like explaining to you and it's fucking sexy but as if fuck. that was happening we wouldn't have the question right no but like it's just that and then you get too drunk and then you have don't have sex and that's still a I actually, like unlike you i don't feel like the not having sex is like the important part for me maybe it's because like i'm not very good at sex <laughs> You are. No, not that I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> but um, I don't know. It's just like it's a, it's a. But like, your needs, emotionally and physically, are not being fulfilled, and that is Oops. clear in that fact. You asked this question, and yeah, like, and he needs to step up or he needs to step out. But that's okay. So, yes, I agree with that, and yet I think that's a sort of very stereotypical answer that we would be giving. Like, yeah. He seems like a waste man. Yeah, you should just dump him. And yet we do acknowledge that this like things are way more complicated. You probably what if you have like a mortgage together? What if like, you know, what if he is achieving that and he's very, very close to achieving that particular goal that will take you to this well, next level? What I would always say is like have a conversation with him, like tell him that you like I feel like if I told my partner like, hey, I really it's really important to me that you complimented me about like my aesthetics or whatever it is they would take that on board and if he didn't take that on board that would be an ongoing problem like the fact that she said she's already had these conversations is why i'm going so like fucking so nuclear ask, on okay. this that's why maybe a time is not just talking about like asking for a grand gesture what if okay this is this is your thing yeah i <laughs> this is my thing but basically it's your love language i've been reading about love languages recently because i'm Ooh. a hippie and like there's different love languages some of them are like uh physical uh, like verbal compliments some of them are physical compliments some of them are like gifts and such and like yeah sorry so so i was wondering what if it is that like the same question that you've asked us today literally that same paragraph you send as a letter to your partner being like hey i got to the space where i asked two random girls about this what does this mean to us and that's in a way that's a that's a grand, grand gesture the negative side from you being like i've arrived to this point and and it's time for them to make the grand gesture. Yeah. That would be like a make it or break it sort of situation. Yes. And I don't think you should be like dumping them immediately. I think just bas basically getting them to understand that you have arrived to this point where you're so desperate, I suppose, where you're having to do this. So I quite like us going back to the meta as to why people are asking us these yeah. questions. Because that already is like, that's a, that's a big thing to do. Like to, to write up a question to like two random people that you don't know about this and um, and to be like, hey, this is this is where I have to. And you can fuck it. You can even send in like our YouTube answer that you're going very, very soon receive. Oh, don't do that. Cause I like, said dump him like five times. No, but like <laughs> that's what normal people would fucking do. Like, that's it. Like, that's kind of the answer. It's just that we are also trying to. Yeah, we want to give him a chance to provide you with the care you need because clearly there are things keeping you in this relationship that yeah. we don't know about that yeah, are valid absolutely. and important and no one knows what happens behind closed doors no. maybe but then again like the fact that they even mentioned like foreplay is becoming less of a thing like i was like mate maybe like the one time they do bang you it's just like the best That's thing a, in the world but also like what does she mean by foreplay does she mean she doesn't come and he just comes because a lot of penetrative sex a woman doesn't come and because that's not okay yeah. if your boyfriend is not making you come talk to him about it then dump him like sorry that <laughs> that is my hard line like so yeah, i'd like i'd like to think we've given you quite a few avenues here but it's also it's, i think those those two questions kind of got mirrored kind in an interesting yeah, way I think so two too. of them so uh, <laughs> take what you will from that yeah